students uh, we can continue our ncrt exercise discussion for the chapter potential and capacitance the last two videos we uh, discussed the questions till question number 20 then now question number 21 of our ncrt exercise a good concept here two charges minus q and plus q are located at the point 0 0 minus a and 0 0 a so that is along the z axis then what is the potential at the point 0 0 z and x y z so the two points are given obtain the dependence of potential on the distance r of a point from the origin and is given as r by a is very much greater than 1. Then we have to find what is the work done in moving a small test charge from the point phi to uh, minus 7 along the x axis. Does the answer change if the path of the test charge between the same points is not along the x axis? So we can uh, go through the first question. At first we can draw the figure that is very good. So, say suppose it is y axis, so here the z axis got the uh, importance, I am taking that one as z axis um, and say this is the x axis. So along that the plus q charge is at uh, plus q charge is at 0, 0, uh, um, a and the minus q charge is at uh, uh, 0, 0 minus a. The first concept is, what is the potential at the point 0, 0, z? 0, 0, z. So that is the we have to find at first one. 0, 0, z. So that is nothing but here, the two contributions. One, v plus q. And another one, as we do to the minus q. And suppose you take the value, say, um, this point, say, as I said, this point, say, z. That means V is nothing but equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. The charge is here, the minus Q, say, minus Q contribution, minus Q by. The separation become, this one is what A, A plus EZ. So that is very important. So EZ plus A. Then what is the plus Q contribution? So this is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, the charge division by. Uh, what is the gap here? This is totally as uh, um, A and hence we can say as uh, say Z minus A or A minus Z. So that is a fact. So then we can say is equal to and suppose uh, Z is gre uh, uh, greater than uh, um, this point then you have to take that Z minus A. So that is here. So we can take the common factors as a q by 4 pi epsilon 0 into, so here, as 1 by z minus a minus 1 by z plus a. So that is equal to q by as a 4 pi epsilon 0 into common crossing. So z plus a minus z plus a that division by a minus b into a plus b, so z square minus a square. But here is it is it cancel. So equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 q into 2a division by z square minus a square. So what is a q into 2a? That is nothing but p. So that may be the concept here. And so that is a very important concept. And also, the question number B is, obtain the dependence of potential on the distance R of a point from the origin when R is very much uh, greater than 1. But it is a nothing but what? A typo. And hence its contribution is uh, so cute with S. So we know the concept there for a dipole so it is nothing but equal to at any point, say this is a, a dipole with a minus q plus q 
and from the center, uh, that location um, is at a separation R with an angle theta. You know, uh, that electric field is nothing but as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into P cos theta division by that R square minus L square, the whole square theta. So already we know the concept. For a short dipole, we neglect this quantity. So we can say that uh, uh, for this the system that is proportional to 1 by R square. Then the third question, the third question is, how much uh, uh, work is done in moving a small test charge from the point along the x-axis? So, the along the x-axis for this one, that is along this one, this is the x-axis. But keep in mind, for the dipole, this is the equatorial line. Equatorial line. So, equatorial line, that means, so here the one charge, here is the one charge, and hence it is the equatorial line. Equatorial line means it is equipotential. The equipotential, for whatever may be the location, you know, uh, the change in potential should equal to zero. That is, the potential is a constant. So, the work done should equal to zero. So, that is a speciality with the concept. So, equatorial point. So, the work done should equal to zero. We can move with the next question. Number 22. In the figure, shows a charge uh, array known as an electric quadruple. For a point on the axis of the quadrupole, obtain the dependence of potential on R. Contrast your answers with uh, the electric dipole and the electric monopole. So here, a plus charge Q is here, and this point, 2 minus Q minus Q is there. At this point, as Q is there, we have to find the, at first one, Point on the axis obtain the dependence of potential. So with the potential of at the point P, and we can say here the three contributions. So we can say as V1 plus V2 plus V3. So what is the V1 contribution? It is simple K into the charge Q division by the separation. From this point it is R, so this becomes A. So we can say that it is R plus A. And what about this contribution? Again K into the charge here is minus 2q by the separation is r and then plus k into the charge there is q by the separation is r minus a. So that's all. It's a very important concept. So we can take uh, uh, that common factors as a k as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q that division into so 1 by r plus a minus 2 by R plus 1 by R minus A. If you just consider these two, we can write as equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon 0 into, come on, R minus A, yes, plus R plus A, that division by R square minus A square, that division minus 2 by R. Then here it becomes a 2R. So you just cross it. You get the value Q by 4 pi epsilon 0 into 2R square. 2R square minus, you can just cross it. Again 2R square minus minus plus 2A square. The division by R into R square minus A square. So here, here, here cancel. So you get the value as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. So 2q into 2a into a, that division by r cube minus r a square. But if you just take the assumed concept here, as we can say as a is very much less than 1, so we can avoid that concept. And hence we can say the potential is 1 by r cube proportionality. But in the second case for the electric dipole, we already, you know, the potential is proportional to 1 by R square. But for a point charge, for a monopole, for a point charge, we know it is proportional to 1 by R. So there is a difference. So maybe the very good concept. That is question number 22. Number 23, a good concept. An electrical technician requires a capacitance of 2 microfarad in a circuit of potential difference of 
thousand volt. A large number of one microfarad capacitors are available, to which can withstand a potential difference of not not more than 400 volt. So maximum withstanding potential is 400 for each one microfarad. Such as a possible arrangement requires the minimum number of capacitors. So we need two microfarad. So that is a very important concept. So how we can follow it? See, suppose uh, we know uh, here the uh, maximum standing potential is 400, but how number of uh, uh, capacitance we can connect in series to get the 1,000? And suppose a 400 into, so you know in series that potentials are added together. So we can say that 400 into how many number of uh, capacitors are there in series in a row, um, that should be equal to 1,000. So we can easily find the value of n is equal to that 1000 division by 400. Roughly, you get the value as 25. We can take as 3. So uh, the uh, whole integer we have to take as a 3. But in another row, we can say, so that means that the circuit become parallel. In parallel, we know the effective capacitance becomes uh, nothing but a C by n. So that is equal to what? The very important concept. So here, um, 1 by 3 uh, microfarad. So that is a very important concept. Sorry, in series, in series, you know, as uh, C dash is equal to C by N. So C is 1. So by um, uh, 3 in number, so uh, 1 by 3 microfarad. So that is the effective capacitance in a row. So suppose we are using EM rows there, EM rows there, then the C equivalent become what? So EM into C. So uh, in parallel actually. So it becomes uh, in parallel. So therefore it becomes uh, EM into C. So EM is equal to what? C equivalent to by the individual. The C equivalent is what? We needed the value of 2 microfarad. So 2 microfarad division by 1 by 3. So that is a very important concept. So that is equal to 6. So how many number of rows are there? 6. In a row, how many numbers are there? 3. So the total capacitors is what? The total capacitors becomes a M into N. So equal to um, 6 into 3. So you get the value as 18. So keep in mind, uh, here, in a row, we can maximum affordable a potential difference of 1,000. So that is very important. And hence, uh, we know minimum three can include in that uh, row. Uh, so uh, when that three capacitors are connected in series, the maximum one by three mu F is possible. So uh, another rows are needed in order to get the two mu F. So the circuit diagram become parallel and hence uh, they are uh, M becomes 6, so you get the value as 18. A good question. Number 24. What is the area of the plate of 2 farad parallel plate capacitor? Given that the separation between the uh, plate is a 0.5 centimeter, it becomes a very, we get a, a very good concept from this uh, question. And that, we know the concept as a C is equal to epsilon 0 A by D. So, we needed to find what is the equation for A. So, A is equal to what? C D by epsilon 0. So, that is equal to what is the C? 2 into uh, 0.5 into 10 rise to minus 2. That division by epsilon 0 is what? 8.854 into 10 rise to minus 12. So, you get the value as 1.13 into 10 rise to 9 meter square. So, large amount of area is there. Because that capacitance value is a large one. And that's the reason why we are using the microfarad or less. So that is a very important concept. Good concept. Number 25. A good, good circuit previous year question. Obtain the equivalent capacitance of the network in figure for a 300 volt supply. Determine the charge and voltage across each capacitor. So here the C1 with the 100 PF. 200 PF with uh, it is a C2 and this is a C3 and this is a C4 and we are giving the 300 voltage. So we just, uh, the circuit into like this one equal to, we can take this one as in the C4, so C4 
uh, C4, that is uh, 100 uh, PF. And then, then, so here it is a C1 with the 100 PF. Then in a series network, there, there are two capacities are there. And here we labeling as a C2 and a C3, but each are with the 200 PF, but they are connected to a potential of 300 volt. So we can just at first uh, have to find what is the equivalent uh, capacitance there. So to acquire that, you know here, uh, these 200, 200 are in series. So uh, C2 and C3 together, that will give uh, C by N, that is equal to 200 uh, uh, mu F division by uh, uh, PF, PF, PF by two. So that is equal to uh, 100 uh, uh, PF. So that is a very important concept. So that 100 PF and this 100 PF are in series. So this 100 PF and this 100 PF are in parallel. And therefore, the circuit can be like this one. It becomes 100 PF. Then in a, a series with a, a 200 PF. Uh, PF. So that is a C4. Um, then uh, in, in this is connecting in between 300 volt. So that is a simple circuit. So here, the 200, 200, they are in series. So effective become 100 PF. That 100 PF is in parallel with the 100. We get the value as 200. So this is the circuit in last. So keep in mind here, the 300 potential. So we know the concept as a Q is equal to ZV. So the capacitance is proportional to 1 by potential. Here it is a series network, so the charge is constant. But the potential device as inversely, and hence we can say the very important concept, the potential difference across C4 is in the ratio 2 is 1. So that is, a, we can say as a 200 volt. So how we can find the charge on C4? So that is equal to C4 into V4. So C4 is what? Uh, it is um, uh, C4, the capacitance is 200 um, the capacitance uh, of uh, C4 is 100, so 100 into 10 raised to minus uh, um, uh, 12 into the potential as uh, 200. So you get the value equal to 2 into 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb, that is a 4 C4. Then we can find what is the potential drop across a C1 across the C1. So here it is 200, then it is becomes 100 roughly. So equal to 100 volt. Arno, uh, you know that R in a series, therefore here it is 200, then it becomes a t uh, 100 volt. Um, therefore, what is the charge on C1? So that is equal to C1 V1. What is the C1 here? So that is a 100 into 10 raised to minus 12 into what is the potential 100? So equal to 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb. Then the next one is, uh, what is the uh, potential uh, uh, drop uh, across uh, uh, C2 and C3? C2 and uh, C3. So you know it is uh, totally uh, 100 volt. Uh, therefore, in each one with a potential of uh, 50 volt each. Therefore, the charge on C2 is simply um, that uh, potential into that capacitance. So that is uh, 200 into 10 raised to minus 12. So 10 raised to minus 8 coulomb. So the concept is simple, uh, if you just to know the theory part of that question. So that is a 25. Then uh, number 26, a small cost, a simple question is waiting. The plates of a parallel plate capacitor have an area that is given as is equal to 90 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter square and are separated by 2.5 millimeter as a 10 raised to minus 3. The capacitor is connected to a 400 volt to supply at first, so 400 volt. What is the electrostatic energy stored by the capacitor? So it is simply, um, it is equal to half into C into V square. So we need the relation for C. So C is equal to what? Epsilon 0 A by D. So that is equal to 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12 into area 19 into 10 raised to minus 4 that division by the separation as a 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 3. So that is equal to half. If you just solve it, you get the value 3.187 into 10 raised to minus 11 farad. 
So if we just substitute it, so half into 3.187 into 10 raised to minus 11 into the 400 square, you get the value the 2.55 into 10 raised to minus 6 joule. Then the concept is what? We uh, this energy as stored in the field between the plate and obtain the energy uh, per unit volume. So that is energy density. So that is energy by volume. So that is equal to energy is what? 2.55 into 10 raised to minus 6 joule by volume. Volume is what? Area into the separation. So 10 raised to minus 6 by the area as 90 into 10 raised to minus 4 into 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 3. And you get the value as 113 joules per meter cube. 0.113 into joule per meter cube. So we need U in terms of electric field. You know it is a half a CV square by volume. You know the relation for C is what? Epsilon 0 A by D. Then how we can find V in terms of electric field as E D. So V square means what? E square D square. So d square, d square cancel, 1a cancel, you get the value as half epsilon 0 e square. So that is the, in terms of electric field, the potential energy. And keep in mind, in a capacitor, that energy is stored in the form of electric field. With the equation, energy density is equal to half epsilon 0 e square. A good aspect. Number 27. A 4 microfarad capacitor is charged by a 200 volt supply. It is then disconnected from the supply and is connected to another uncharged 2 microfarad capacitor. How much electrostatic energy um, of the first capacitor is uh, lost in the form of heat and uh, electromagnetic radiation? Already we derived that one. The loss of energy is uh, nothing but uh, uh, in the redistribution of capacitors, we derived the relation as a C1, C2 by C1 plus a C2 into V1 minus V2, the whole square. And here the second one is uncharged one, and hence we to take the value as a zero. So you can just uh, substitute the value. The C1 is nothing but a four microfarad, and uh, uh, the second one, it is a two micro, that division by four plus two as a six into 10 rise to minus six into as V1 is given as a 200 minus 0, the whole square. So that is equal to, as 1 by 2 into, 2, 2, 2 can be cancelled. Uh, so we can uh, uh, write as a 2 by 6, 2 by 6 into 10 rise to minus 6 into, 4 into, 10 rise to 4. So you get the value as uh, 8 by, 8 by 6, and it exactly, you get the value as a 2.67 into 10 rise to minus 2 joule. A good concept, but keep in mind this relation is very important. Number 28 show that the force on each plate of a parallel capacitor is equal to, has a magnitude is equal to half QE. So that is a very important concept. And you see, we, we can simply use the concept as energy density is what? Half epsilon zero e square. Good concept. But energy density is what? That is nothing but the pressure there. Then we can write as, as the force by area is equal to half epsilon zero e square. So the force is nothing but equal to half Epsilon 0 A into E square. That is equal to, but we have it converted in terms of capacitance. So we can uh, uh, just uh, use the concept. We can divide uh, a D uh, on the numerator and uh, in the denominator. So this factor becomes C. So half into uh, C into, uh, we can uh, use the concept as E D into E. So that is a very important. What is E D? is nothing but uh, the uh, potential into E. What is CV? The charge. So half Q into E. A good aspect. That force between, and keep in mind, 
or in a capacitance if it is with a positive plate and it should be negative and hence there should be an attractor and that's the reason why in order to pull out it is too difficult because of this force of interaction between the um, two plates so that is a very good concept number 29 and this good good question is waiting a spherical capacitor consists of two concentric spherical conductors held in position by um, suitable insulating supports so that the capacitance of a spherical capacitor is given by the relation where r1 and r2 be the outer and inner spheres respectively see simply we can draw see the figure so concentric spheres actually so the first is sphere so in the figure it is r2 so the inner is given a charge q2 is given a charge q so outer one is there with the radius r1 and its outer surface is earth so that is very important one so outer is earth and the inner charge is given as q that is very important concept so what is the potential um, at uh, um, r2 so at this point what is so because of q charge there is a contribution we can say that is a, a 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 that a charge division by the separation as r2 and also keep in mind because of the inducement and this uh, layer the inner layer become minus q and the outer layer is r through 1 so it becomes 0 so there is a uh, contribution from because of that inducement uh, because of this shell but you know inside the potential that is a constant in a, a shell because its electric field is zero because of its contribution therefore that contribution can be written as, as 1 by 4 pi epsilon zero as a minus q division by its radius as a, we can take as r1 and also what is v r1 so due to this one you know it is earth and we can say the value is zero so what is the net potential there are differences so v r2 minus v r1 so that is nothing but equal to this value so we can take as a q by 4 pi epsilon 0 in common we can write as 1 by r2 minus 1 by r1 so that is the potential but we know the concept uh, just crossing uh, you get the value as uh, um, r1 minus r2 that division by r1 r2 you know the capacitance is what q by v so q by v so you just to take it you get the value as a 4 pi epsilon 0 r1 r2 by r1 minus r2 a good concept so this is the procedure keep in mind the very important concept how to calculate the potential at this point as r2 so two contributors there one uh, that uh, spherical shell itself on its surface so that is a value and another one the at any inside point due to this shell keep in mind is a constant value uh, reason because of its the electric field at any point it becomes zero inside but how it attains a charge minus q because of the induction so that uh, attains minus q and the plus charge is uh, earth to one so we get the this relation a good concept we can move to the question number 30 a spherical capacitor has an inner sphere of radius 12 centimeter and the outer sphere of radius 13 centimeter the outer sphere is earth so the uh, last question we discussed about that one the inner sphere is giving a charge capital q as 2.5 micros uh, coulomb the space between the spheres is filled with a dielectric constant 32 so determine the capacitance of the capacitor what is the potential of the inner sphere and compare the capacitance of the capacitor with an isolated sphere of radius 12 centimeter so we can go with the first concept as a so we know the concept as a c is equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 in a dielectric medium we can say epsilon r r1 r2 that division by r1 minus r2 so you know 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is 9 into 10 raised to 9 so for pi epsilon 0 take the value as 1 by 9 into 10 raised to 9 into epsilon r is given as a 32 into radius as a 12 into 10 raised to minus 2 into 13 into 10 raised to minus 2 that division by the 0.13 minus 0.12 
So you get the value as 5.547 into 10 raised to minus 9 fatted. The question B, what is the potential? Simply it is a Q by C. The Q is what here? The 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 6 by the capacitance as 5.5 into 10 raised to minus 9. So you get the value as 450.7 volt. Simple. But for a spherical conductor, the capacitance can be simply find out by the relation 4 pi epsilon 0 r. We just studied about it at the beginning. So that is equal to 1 by 9 into 10 raised to 9 times of the radius as a, that is a 12 centimeter. So you get the value as 1.33 into 10 raised to minus 11. So that is a very important concept here. That value is smaller because, because there is a no nearby earth conducting plate. So that's the reason why its value is less. So good concept, good concept. So we can move to the question number 31. Uh, some uh, conceptual questions. Question number 31. Two large conducting spheres carrying charges Q1 and Q2 are brought close to each other. Is the magnitude of electrostatic force between them exactly given by? So no reason. When they come closer, the uniform distribution becomes non-uniform distribution. So keep in mind the very important concept, the Coulomb's law is valid only for point charges. So no is the answer. If Coulomb law is involved as 1 by r cube dependence instead of 1 by r square, would Gauss's law be still true? No, the Gauss's law becomes true only and only if it is proportional to 1 by, uh, so it is, will not be true. And see, a small test charge is released to rest at a point in an electrostatic field. Will it travel along the field line? Sure, but with one condition that electric field is in a stray line. Stray line, otherwise it becomes a curved one. And D, what is the work done by the field of a nucleus in a complete circular orbit of the electron? What if the orbit is uh, um, elliptical? But or maybe the case for a closed loop, for a closed loop it becomes a zero. Then, we know that the electric field is discontinuous across the surface of a charged conductor. Is the electric potential also discontinuous? Uh, no. The potential is a scalar quantity and hence it is not discontinuous. And the next question, what meaning would you give to the capacitance of a single conductor? Yes, a single capacitor, conductor, a single conductor is a capacitor, is a capacitor with one plate at infinity, with one plate at infinity. And that is the meaning. Then the next one, guess a possible reason why water has a much greater dielectric constant. Keep in mind, um, the water, water is a polar dielectric, polar dielectric. But the mica is a non-polar, so that is the reason why it got higher values. Number 32. A cylindrical capacitor has two coaxial cylinders of length 15 centimeter and a radii 15 centimeter. Length 15 and a radii 1.5 and 1.4. The outer cylinder is earthed and the inner cylinder is given a charge of 3.5 microcoulomb. Determine the capacitance of the system and the potential of the inner cylinder. Neglect the end effects. So the capacitor cylinder, we can go with a, a simple equation. Uh, keep in mind as a C is equal to 2 pi epsilon 0 L by 2.303 log to the base 10 of B by A. Uh, this is the very relevant equation. Um, so that is a very important concept. See, 
So you can just substitute as a 2 pi into epsilon 0, 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12 into as a 15 centimeter in length, that division by as a 2.303 log to the base 10 half B by A, yes, as 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 by 1.4 into 10 raised to minus 2. So you get the value as 1.21 into 10 raised to minus 10 farad. So that is a value and keep in mind for a uh, cylindrical capacitor, this is the very important relation. So keep in mind. Number 33. A parallel plate capacitor is to be designed with a voltage rating of 1 kilovolt using a material of dielectric constant 3 and a dielectric strength about a, a 10 raised to 7 volt per meter. 10 raised to 7 volt per meter. For safety, never exceed is a 10 percentage of the dielectric strength. What minimum area of the plate is required to have a capacitance of uh, uh, 50 picofarad? So, already it is given, the electric field in needed is 10 percentage of the dielectric strength, that is a 10 raised to 7. So, we can say as a 10 raised to 6 volt per meter. Already we know the electric field is nothing but V by R. So, the radius needed is a 1000 volt division by the electric field as a 10 raised to 6. So, that is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 meter. Then we can easily find the capacitance C is equal to epsilon 0, uh, epsilon r, a division by the separation as r here. So, a is equal to here, c r division by epsilon 0, epsilon r. That is equal to 50 into 10 raised to minus 12 into 10 raised to minus 3 division by 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12 into 3. So, you get the value roughly 19 centimeter square. A good aspect, you should know clearly what you mean by uh, that uh, dielectric uh, strength. For a material, uh, without electric breakdown, it will uh, possible till the limit of that uh, dielectric strength. So, we can move to the question number 34. Describe the schematically that uh, the equipotential surface corresponds to constant electric field in the Z direction. So, uh, if, uh, if it is a Z direction, uh, then um, that uh, electric uh, uh, equipotential surface to be uh, perpendicular to that. So, it must be in the uh, XY plane. So, that is a very important concept. And uh, for B, a field that uniformly increases in magnitude but remains constant in Z direction. So, keep in mind, uniformly increases. So, increasing means the separation between the uh, two, the uh, separation between the uh, equipotential surfaces should decrease. So, if it is Z, we can say uh, this is the plate, this is the plate, this is the plate, this is the plate. This is the plate. So, that is a very important one. While going uh, along this, uh, its value is goes on increasing. So, that is a concept. And uh, what about C? A single positive charge at the origin. So, you know, this is the charge. And keep in mind, while uh, leave, uh, across, while reaching the center, its uh, electric field strength must increase. So, the equipotential surfaces goes on increasing. And then a uniform grid consisting of long equally spaced parallel charged wires in a plane. So, keep in mind, at that case, uh, we can't say a specific uh, uh, um, uh, shape, but um, we can say one thing um, at the end, at large distances, uh, and that uh, with respect to that grid, we can say here it is a non uh, shape, but um, at the farther distances, we can say it is uh, um, parallel to the grid and straight line. So, that is a very important concept. Number 35. In a Van de Graaff generator uh, with a 15 into 10 raised to 6 volt electrode, the dielectric strength of the gas is a 5 into 10 raised to 7. Then, what is the minimum radius required? So, there also, while dealing with that concept, for safety, maximum permissible electric field is 
10 percentage of uh, that dielectric strength that's 5 into 10 rise to 7 so we can say that 5 into 10 rise to 6 volt per meter so simply as e is equal to v by d and d take the value is equal to v by e is equal to 1.5 into 10 rise to 5 that division by 5 into or 15 into 10 rise to 6 15 into 10 rise to 6 by the electric field as 5 into 10 rise to 6 so you get the value as a 0.3 meter so that is equal to 30 centimeter so that is the answer number 36 a small uh, sphere of radius r1 and a charge q1 is enclosed by a spherical shell of radius uh, r2 and a charge q2 show that if q1 is positive charge will necessarily flow from the sphere to the shell when the two are connected by a wire yes that is a very important one keep in mind the on a shell, the charges are uh, resides on the surface of the conductor. So, the charge will, um, uh, so the charge on inner sphere, inner sphere will flow, will flow towards the shell through the conducting wire. So, from, again from Gauss's law, you know, no electric field, so that electric field is zero inside the Gaussian surface. So, the charges enclosed by a closed surface only contribute towards the field, keep in mind. So the charges enclosed by a closed surface only contribute towards the field. So uh, keep in mind, Q2 does not matter, do, does not matter in this case. Though if uh, Q1 is positive, keep in mind, the potential difference is also positive, also positive. So that is a very important concept. Carefully listen the concept I told. See the last question, number 37. A simple concept. The top of the atmosphere is about 400 kilovolt with respect to the surface of the earth, corresponding to the electric field that decreases with altitude. Near the surface of earth, the field is about 100 volt per meter. Why then we now get an electric shock as we step out of our house into the open? So keep in mind one uh, thing. Our body and earth, our body and earth surface become, earth surface become equipotential. So equipotential means, uh, keep in mind, there is no potential difference so there is no current flow through it and the second one a man fixes outside his house one one evening a two meter high insulating slab carrying on its top a large aluminium sheet of area one meter square will he get an electric shock a shock if he touches the metal sheet next morning surely reason the charge will flow to the earth see the very important concept is uh, but through the atmosphere that aluminium sheet got the charged one so what happening is that when he touches that aluminium the charge will flow through the earth and become shocked so that is a very important concept and the c the discharging current in the atmosphere due to the small conductivity of air is known to be 1800 armstrong um, ampere on an average over the globe. Why then does the atmosphere not discharge itself completely in due course and become electrically neutral? In other words, what keeps the atmosphere charged? So, no doubt, the atmosphere continuously gets charged due to lightning, thunderstorms, but simultaneously get discharged through the normal atmospheric zone. So, that is the uh, hence the keep the system balanced what are the forms of energy into which the electric energy of the atmosphere is dissipated during a lightning so we know if you look that you it becomes a, as a light uh, uh, becomes a sound uh, and uh, the heat energy uh, so that is what is happening with the thunderstorms and lightning so the very good concepts are waiting inside all the 37 questions so 
carefully go through it. And maybe some questions are very important for your board exam and entrance exam. So uh, try to solve every question so neatly. God bless you. Take care.